even though I've caught a trout before. I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Nearly an expert. Earlier this month, we hit the road west from Denver with Russell Miller from Umpqua Feather Merchants to spend some time out of the office and on the water. Russell is an encyclopedia of fly fishing knowledge. A proficient caster, instructor, and former guide, Russell spends his days as director of marketing for Umpqua Feather Merchants. Join us in this two-part video series as we tap in to the technical mind of Russell Miller and learn how he strategizes for new water, picks flies, and has success. Yeah, we're in spot one. Oh, hot air balloon just popped up. That's kind of cool. We're in spot one here. Uh, it's cold. You can see your breath. Uh, it really feels like fall up in the mountains. Uh, the fish are going to be hanging out in kind of that more winter water, uh, classic stuff where it's slower, deeper water. Um, less in the in the riffles where we'd be kind of expecting the dry flies. I don't want to wait for that to happen. It may happen, so I'm going to go down and get them. I'm going to put on uh, a two-fly Euro Nymph rig, uh, pink beaded hare's ear, and a uh, we're going to go dark, uh, kind of in that beta sea world here with a with a little uh, dark Frenchy, uh, and that'll be my two flies this morning. We'll start with. Never been here before. Why wouldn't they eat those flies? Picking flies for me comes down to confidence. Um, it's having spent time on the water, uh, and I kind of know what I like to fish. Uh, so when you, we look in, inside my box there, it's, it's kind of rows of the same kind of flies uh, and different slight variations in color and weight. Um, and that's gonna help kind of imitate some of the different hatches. But if I was gonna be picking out flies for the first time at the bins in the shop, uh, I'd certainly kind of ask the, the staff what's fishing. And then from there, I'd, I'd think about where I've been and, uh, and like, oh, you know what? This kind of looks like this scenario that I've been at before. Um, I'm gonna put on flies that maybe work. The other kind of logic that I have with flies is to try to do some flies that are gonna be searching patterns, right? Stuff that uh, I've never been to this creek before. So I'm gonna put on flies, and these two flies that I've chosen, um, the only theme that kind of surrounds them here is there's a bit of pink on both of them. There's the pink collar on the Frenchie, and then a pink bead. The pink bead's gonna be a little bit of a trigger point where it's gonna make those fish maybe jump on the fly a little bit. Um, and then the, the little Frenchie here, it's just a, man, a pheasant tail. I don't care whether you call it a Frenchie or a pheasant tail. It's caught fish everywhere. You know what's going to work. It's a great little betis. It's a great little PMD. Uh, it's a little micro stonefly. Um, so I like, a, I like a fly that's going to imitate as much as possible so I can get away with not being very good uh, and have the best odds of catching a fish. Even though I've caught a trout before. I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Nearly an expert. All right, so I've got two flies. I put the heavy one on the bottom. I put the light one up top. Uh, and I'm gonna put a little bit of wax on the end of my cider just to make it glow. You can see how nice it glows. You just get a little extra visibility. Uh, the nice thing is, right, if I'm gonna end up fishing a really shallow spot, I can take this and just put it on my 7X and create a cider way down low. And then when I'm done with it, rub it off. I took, a, uh, I took a class from an angler who I feel like is light years better than me. Um, and uh, he said, well, why don't you start with the easy fish? Uh, and that's the fish that's right in front of you. It's not the one that's on the far side in the impossible lie, it's the one right in front of you. And so your first couple casts should always be to that easy fish that might be laying right in front of you. So that fish came uh, right, right at the break line. Um, and you can see here, if we look at where the water comes down and where we've got this foam line here, uh, he came right on the fast side of that break, kind of right where you'd expect the trout to live. How confident are you that a, a fish is in a certain water type? This little bucket right here, right behind this rock, I really thought was gonna be 
gimme. And I've put, put these two flies through there with what I feel like are great presentation. And, uh, and that's probably when I'd make a fly change is after I've put it through four or five times with a really great presentation with a set of flies when I'm searching to find what's working and I don't get anything, then I'll change flies uh, and give them something new. So let's do that now. Right now I've got a little techie beta on that I'm gonna knock off and that, that Frenchie, which I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for a pheasant tail. I'm sticking with 7X. Uh, fish smaller, lighter flies and just to increase my cut rate as it falls through the water. So we'll get out, uh, we're gonna try something a little bit brighter. This is uh, the Perta Chingon and a, uh, let's try the olive, a little flashy olive. We'll do that on the top and on the bottom. Try a little surveyor. So changing over to the pink beaded, uh, the flashier rig in general. This one ate a pink beaded pheasant tail. And then uh, we had one eat the, uh, the real flashy Perta Chingon as well. So they, why go drab when you can go real flashy and glitzy? I guess that's the motto here at this point. So I'm, I'm gonna stick with this a little bit and see uh, if experimenting with the water type uh, means that we can get some more action. So everything's kind of come, I expected them in the slower water back here, but everything's kind of come from this upper zone here, fish number one, fish number two, and another one right in the middle. So we'll change water type and see if we can't find more fish. If this isn't a part of your day, I'm so impressed. I haven't seen any rise yet. Well, all right, so I've done a couple different technique changes in here, a couple different fly changes in here. I'll try one more thing in here. Watching Russell pick apart a piece of water is a sight to behold. He tactically dissected the various ripples and runs, moving slowly upstream. Numerous fish were duped by his pink beaded pheasant tail, and even a larger fish moved at a jig streamer. The theme for this brisk fall morning was to go down to him, find a pattern, and keep moving. We were out of the office and on the water exactly where we were meant to be. And Autumn in the Rockies was putting on a show. Stay tuned as we head to spot two in search of dry fly eating fish and another beautiful trout stream. That's an interesting spot to fish. Subscribe to the channel to see where we pop up next Episode 2 featuring On the Water Tactics with Russell Miller of Umpqua Feather Merchants. Not much to be said about that. That's just fun. Maybe I can get another. <laughs>